Hey, hey, you guys. Are you ready for another one of Auntie Cuckoo's wild murder stories? Yeah? No? Well, buck her up. Bu buck her up? Buckle up, buttercup, because I got another one for you. Um, I would think most of you, the people that I know, um, will remember this story, um, or at least have heard of it. Do you remember the prom mom or the killer prom mom, a.k.a. Melissa Drexler? So, and that's what I'm going to tell you guys about tonight real quick, and I'll get you back to your day. As usual, I'll give you the key players. Like I said, we have Melissa Drexler. Um, <clears throat> she's a teenager in high school. Uh, other key player is her boyfriend, John Lewis. Um, he's already graduated high school, um, obviously, and then her parents and friends and then the community, believe it or not. Those are our key players, so let's do it. Um, this takes place in the 1990s, like it's like so long ago, right? Like it is a long time ago, actually. Anyway, so um, <clears throat> it's actually the late 1990s, like 1997, I think it is. Um, Melissa Drexler is in 10th grade and she's hanging out with her best friend, Rebecca. It's said that Melissa grew up in like a very regular, normal life, nothing like crazy or significant in her background. You know, she grew up in a Catholic family, mom and dad, stable home, things good, wonderful, regular old Joe Schmoes and neighbor around the block type situation. So, um, that's the story on Melissa's, like, background, pretty much. So, um, in the 10th grade, Melissa has a best friend, Rebecca, and they're hanging out, <clears throat> and this boy is delivering groceries, who works at the grocery store and whatnot, and his name is John Lewis, and Melissa and him meet eyes, and after a little bit of back and forth and a few times delivering groceries, they end up liking each other. Well, Miss Melissa is very inexperienced and still holding her V card. Um, so she's a little bit younger and inexperienced. Like I said, she's in the 10th grade, whereas John Lewis has already graduated high school and is not holding his card still. So, um, you know, they find ways to spend time together when no one's around. You know, she's head over heels, her first love. If you've been in high school and had that first love, you know how it is. It's like very dramatic. One day you're in love and head over heels and the next day you're like broken up. I hate him. I'm never talking to him again. He's destroying my life. And then the next night, you know, you're like, oh, I couldn't live without him. That type, you know, they're high schoolers. Madly in love. It's going down. It's how you roll. So that's going on between them. Regular, typical kid stuff. So, Melissa, like I said, she does have her V-card, but she no longer has it. Thank you to John Lewis. They are sneaking up and doing their thing on the side and being very sneaky and hush-hush about it. Melissa's parents have no idea. Um, <clears throat> then, Melissa is hanging out with John, and Melissa is thinking that it's been a while since she's had her period. And she says to John one night, I, I think I might be late. And John friggin' like is like, what? What do you mean you might be late? I thought you're on birth control. I thought this and that. And she's like, I, I, I don't know. I could be wrong. I probably just miscounted. I'm jumping the gun. No biggie. I'm probably wrong. And he's like, oh, okay, baby. All right, honey. I'm so glad to hear that. You scared me. She's like, I'm so sorry, honey. I'm jumping the gun. I don't know why I'd even say that because I'm sure I counted wrong. And he's like, all right, all right. So they finish their night. Melissa literally straight up puts that in the back of her head is full on denial Never acknowledges it again. Is like, mm, miss period. Mm, nope, not pregnant. Although she is starting to gain a little bit of weight. She's starting to be a little bit hungrier. So, as this is going on, um, Melissa's parents don't notice any changes in her. Even her best friend, Rebecca, does not notice any changes in her at all. So, um... You know, obviously she's going to high school and whatnot. I remember when I was in high school, I wore like hoodies and it was cold in high school and stuff. So I constantly had hoodies and sweatshirts and things like that on. So she didn't look like out of place. So as they spend this time together, um, John and her discussing it comes time for her senior prom. It's uh, spring 1997. Senior prom comes up. She gets a dress, whatnot, gets ready. John picks her up. It is, to be exact, one moment, June 6, 1997, going to her senior prom, 
and she gets dressed up. She's got a long black dress on, a short sleeve, a little bit low cut, but it's covering. She comes walking down the stairs, and John's like, oh my God, you look gorgeous, obviously, what she did looked beautiful. They get in the limo, and they're on their way, and Melissa's like, Ugh! on the way like literally okay and they're like what's going on she's like i'm not feeling good something's wrong with my stomach i don't feel very good and they're like oh that sucks and she's like yeah i'll be all right it's cool we good we all right i'm gonna make it through this we good so they go to prom they get to the prom melissa's like like i said my stomach hurts i'm just gonna go to the bathroom real quick i'll be right back and john's like all right he's hanging out with her best friend rebecca and her date whatever Melissa's in the bathroom, and she's, like, in this stall, like, <gasps> like, I mean, she's in full-on active labor, in case you didn't notice from my, <clears throat> so she's in full-on active labor, which started in the limo, she's at the prom now, they're out there dancing, she's in the stall alone, completely has denied, not told anyone she's pregnant, senior prom, in the stall alone, just got there, and she's full-on giving birth so she has no choice obviously other than to push I mean the baby's coming so she gives birth in the stall people hear what's happening because obviously it's prom they're coming in and out of the bathroom they hear the noises they think that it's a couple of kids getting it on doing it in the stall they don't realize she's giving birth they literally think like oh our friends are hooking up yeah getting freaky on prom who didn't right who doesn't well i didn't but some people did some people didn't anyways you know what i mean so that's what they thought no one thought she was giving birth so anyways people come in and out they leave whatnot she gives birth the baby pops in the freaking toilet a little baby boy born six pounds he is born and she pulls him out of the toilet she's looking around she's got this baby in her hands you know, with an umbilical cord, obviously, right? We all know what happens when babies are born. So she's like, what do I do? Looks around. The only thing she can find to cut the umbilical cord is if you've ever been in a lady's bathroom, the sanitary napkin dispenser, um, not the dispenser. I'm sorry. The, uh, the trash can. I don't know what else to call it, but where you put your pads and your tampons, your dirty ones, and you put it in that little dispository thing. That's all she can find. She uses the edge of that to cut her baby's umbilical cord. Um, and then looks at the baby and applies pressure to his neck. And then she looks around and obviously the bathroom's covered in blood. And now she has a non-moving baby in her arms. She goes, finds towels, cleans up the floor, finds a plastic bag, wraps the baby up in it, looks around, what do I do with him? Puts him in to the, like, bigger trash where people are throwing, like, their paper towels from washing their hands and stuff. Tightens herself up, like, you know, wipe off that sweat, just give birth, shake it off. Let's do this. And goes back out to the prom. So she goes out to prom, she eats, and she's, like, dancing and stuff. Um it's it's very differential on what people say. Some people say, like, she was out there, like, partying up, having a blast, having the best time of her life, and she was like, let's do it, which is devastating to think. Whereas others um, say that, you know, she was a little bit out of it at times and didn't seem quite herself. So either way you want to go in the story, this just happened in the bathroom. Baby's in the trash. She goes out there. She does go up to the DJ and requests the song, the Unforgiven by Metallica to be played after she just did that whole umbilical cord on the trash can thing and put the baby in the trash. Goes out and dances with her boyfriend. So, during this time at the prom, the janitor goes in the bathroom and obviously sees a complete mess in the stall and is a bit concerned and is cleaning it up and people are asking around and people are talking like, oh, well, we saw Melissa Drexler's foot and her shoe in that stall and like... I'm pretty sure it was her getting it on, bound chicka wow wow with someone. Well, like I said, she wouldn't get it on. She was giving birth. But, so like, oh yeah, it was Melissa Drexler. So this lady comes, and like I said, they don't know yet that there's a baby in the trash. So this lady comes and she's like, honey, are you okay? There's a lot of blood in that bathroom stall. And Melissa's like, oh yeah, I had a real heavy period. I'm so sorry. Da da da. Meanwhile, the janitor is in the bathroom, finishing clean up, picks up the trash bag, and feels that that 
it's super friggin' heavy. Like, why, for some paper towels, why is this so friggin' heavy? Opens it up, digs through the trash, finds a brand new nor newborn six pound little boy who's deceased. So they call 911. EMT show up for two hours. They try to resuscitate this little boy. He's never resuscitated. Anyways, while this is happening outside by the dumpster, because they were taking the trash out. So the prom, people in prom don't even know what's happening yet. Melissa has an idea because they're asking about like the blood and her period and stuff. Then janitor comes and says, oh, it's a baby, whatnot. So then police are like, hold up, lady. We need to talk to you. Take her to the hospital to be investigated. Not, I'm sorry, not be investigated, to be checked out. You know, she just gave birth to a baby. They don't know at this point, maybe the baby was born, still, born as a stillborn, whatever the case is. So, um, <clears throat> the police go back into the prom and find her boyfriend, John Lewis, and is like, hey, um, we just need to let you know that your girlfriend won't be coming back into the prom. She just gave birth. And he's like, what? She just gave birth? And like, yeah. And he's like, how is, how is my girlfriend? How's the baby? And they're like, well, the baby didn't make it. Your girlfriend, she's at the hospital being checked out now. And he's like, oh my God. So obviously they take him there. And then they call. Um, and then they call. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting a message at the same time. I apologize. So then they call um, her parents, obviously. And her parents are like, what? Melissa's not pregnant. What are you talking about? And they're like, no, no, no. You need to come in the hospital. Your daughter's been checked in. She just gave birth. And they're like, no, no, no. She's not. Okay, we'll come down to the hospital to straighten this out. But our daughter is... didn't give birth. What? Had no freaking clue. So they show up. Obviously get straightened out. And it's a parent. It's Melissa. She gave birth. And the baby is dead. And it is their, their daughter, Melissa. So Melissa gets checked out. She leaves the hospital. She goes home. At this point, nobody's charged because, like I said, they don't know, you know, was the baby born alive, not alive? They don't know what happened. And Melissa isn't giving much information. She seems kind of out of it. So, <clears throat> the police end up doing an autopsy on the baby. And bear with me, you guys, because I love my kids. I love all kids so much. And it's just, it's devastating to me to even talk about this. I love my stories and my information, but for different reasons than some people, um, just because I'm curious about it, but it breaks my heart about doing this to any child ever, and nonetheless, a newborn baby. But, um, so it turns out after doing the autopsy to check and see how the baby was dead, I guess, you know, they weren't sure if it was murder or just born anyways. So it turns out that the baby not only was strangled, but also had been suffocated. So it was uh, over a year. I want to say August. What was it? August 20. Where is it? <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. That's wrong. It was 18 days after the murder that she was charged with murder. So she went to jail. She was released on a $50,000 bond to her parents. Um, it was August 20th, 1998, where finally they had come to an agreement and did a plea, plea deal. What they ended up doing is rather than charging Melissa with murder, they did a plea deal and decided to do um, aggravated manslaughter. She was sentenced to 15 years. <clears throat> now, while Melissa was in prison, she spent her time um, doing like fashion classes and like trying to better herself. You know, she did spend her time wisely. And obviously, I mean, she's obviously super remorseful about this. Who couldn't be? Um, but it turns out some people are upset. Some people aren't. Like I said, she got sentenced to 15 years. It was just a little after three years that she was released, um, from jail. And in that time, um, since Melissa obviously has never done any interviews or like media or anything, I mean, who the hell would want to be known for this? I couldn't imagine what she was going through. I couldn't imagine, you know, what her friends or family with this baby. I mean, just the whole thing is just wild. So I couldn't even imagine. Um, but yeah, she's done no media or anything about it. Her dad did say when she was released that, you know, she's looking forward to moving on with her life. As I've done investigation, I've known about the story for years. Um, but as I've done more investigation and stuff, turns out that I hear that she is happily married and has two children, is doing well. Um, but what I wanted to say is I always try and look for silver linings and like the bright side of stuff. What I do, I, I mean, not that there's anything really great about this story, but 
it did like bring national awareness and like media attention and not that like I condone teen pregnancy. I'm like, yeah, kids go out there and get pregnant. You know, that's not what I'm saying by any means, you know, focus on education and all those things. But I feel like, you know, by these stories and these tragedies open people's eyes to, you know, getting support for these girls because it happens, unfortunately, and educating people about safe sex and about adoption and just different avenues besides what happened here. Anyway, so that's what I got for you guys. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for checking in as always. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. Um, as usual, please don't forget to check out my YouTube channel, Storytime with Auntie Cuckoo with a K-O-O-K-O-O. And like, share, subscribe, do your thing, chicken wang. But um, I hope everyone's doing well. Stay safe, make good choices, do good things, be kind to one another. And I'll check you on the flip side, Skillet. Thank you.